Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, hi, I'm Chidera. And on this channel, I talk about marriage, personal finances, and tips for self-improvement. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you ways you can grow your money in the UK as an immigrant. The reason why I'm doing this is because I feel like these things are not spoken about enough, or I did not hear anybody talking about these things. And also just trying to help immigrants like me maximize the financial opportunities in the UK and also better understand it so what I'll be covering in this video first I'm going to talking about savings accounts I'm also going to be talking about ISAs the different types of ISAs I'm going to be talking about your pension pot I'm going to be talking about how to utilize credit cards properly and last but not the least we're going to be talking about debts and how you can avoid that or utilize it properly in order to grow your money make sure to sit back and watch through to the end and let's dive right into it so first thing I want to say here is that this is not a financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. What I'm doing here basically is just to share with you the information that I have gathered and information I feel like you need to know if you're an immigrant in the UK because this information is not readily available to us. That being said, the very first way to grow your money in the UK as an immigrant is to open a savings account with a high interest rate. Now, savings accounts in the UK come in different types, okay? But ideally, I would say you should look to was the digital banks so the online banks because they have less overhead cost overhead cost means like they don't have physical locations they can afford to give better interest rates on savings accounts and i know one of the ones that has a really good interest rate in the uk is chase bank um there's even another financial platform known as plum they have like interest rate of like 2.45 percent now one thing i want to say here is growing your money in the uk is not the easiest thing like the interest rates are usually very minimal like you would see interest rates of like 0.5% to 2.45% and maybe even higher but the thing is it's usually like less than 5% but point is if you want to save your money if you want to hold on to cash if you feel like cash is king it's best you put it in a in a savings account with a good interest rate and how these interest rates are communicated like how you would see the interest rate on a savings account usually written as something like 2.45% AER and AER means annual equivalent rate sometimes it can be APR that's just telling the interest you're going to earn on the money you put in that savings account so make sure to go online and look for savings accounts that have like high interest rates so that at least you're kind of like keeping up with inflation I wouldn't say beating inflation because right now the inflation rate in the UK is 10.52% so if you have a savings account that is 2.45 percent interest rate obviously you're not keeping up with inflation but it's definitely better than just holding on to cash that way you're sure you're getting some small small one pounds here and there it's not massive but it's good okay now the second way to grow your money in the uk is to look into opening isas i'm going to be talking about the different types of isas and what isas are everything so an isa is an individual savings account that allows you to save or invest money tax free the key word here is tax free if you're in the uk you know taxes are everywhere Every Everywhere you turn to, there is a tax. With this account, you can avoid taxes on your money. Now, there are different types. The first is cash ISA. Cash ISA is literally just like your savings account, except that you don't pay any tax on the interest end. And honestly, it's not the best vehicle to grow your money because like it's cash and the interest rate is not usually so good. Like I'm not looking into cash ISAs. It's just, I'm just saying this so you would know that it's an option. The second one is lifetime ISAs. Lifetime ISAs were created to help you buy your first home in the UK, your first house in the UK. So if you're a first time buyer, you should consider a lifetime ISA. So with a lifetime ISA, you can save up to £4,000 maximum yearly and the government will give you a 25% bonus on that £4,000. So what that means is if you save £4,000 in a tax year, you will get £1,000 extra for the government to help you save towards your first home. This maximum of £4,000 is within a tax year. You know, the tax year in the UK runs from April to April. So it's not like January to January, it's April to April. So if you put 4K, you get 1K from the government. However, there are restrictions, limitations on this lifetime ISA with a lifetime ISA you are only allowed to use that money to buy a house so if you withdraw that money for something else other than a house you'll be hit with a 25% penalty fee meaning the government is going to take all that money back you're also going to lose another percentage of your own money apart from the bonus that they take away from you so before you open a lifetime ISA be sure you are going to use that money for a house okay if not you're shooting yourself in the leg the second limitation here is 
currently the value of the house you want to buy must not be more than 450,000 pounds so if the house you want to buy is more than 450,000 pounds you cannot use your lifetime isa and you would be hit with the penalty charge now people are already bringing up conversations asking the government to review the limits on the price of the house to keep up with the current house market because inflation rates have gone up a lot of like house prices to have shut up so this um lifetime isa housing limit was created in 2017 and this is 2023 of course house prices have significantly increased so there are conversations and comments asking the government to review the limits like 450 pounds max on a house is not looking realistic with the current house prices now one thing i forgot to mention here is what are the requirements to have an isa account the basic requirements is that you're over the age of 18 and you're resident in the uk now because i'm speaking to you an immigrant like me one thing i want to say here is before you start opening all of these accounts ensure you have a semi-permanent residency what i mean is if you're a student on a student visa do not start putting money into vehicles like this until you're sure that you have at least one leg or one of your leg in the UK solid. What that means is if, for example, you're on a skilled worker visa for five years, then yes, definitely start looking into putting money in the, all these types of accounts that I'm mentioning. But if you know that your stay here is still like on student visa and also with the current um, conversation about them trying to review the post-study visa from two years to six months, even though God no go allow that. But point is, if you're still on that kind of visa just keep your money when you have like a more solid residency in the uk start looking into these accounts okay okay so the next type of isa is a stocks and shares isa once again isa means individual savings account with this isa you can invest in stocks shares and funds and there's a maximum amount you can put into this stocks and shares isa yearly and it is twenty thousand pounds for each tax year and don't forget whatever interest or dividend you earn from your stocks and shares via a stocks and shares isa you don't get to pay tax that's just the cool thing you don't get to pay tax on your interest and um, dividends so what I'll say is try to look into opening stocks and shares ISA so you can start investing money having a stocks and shares ISA is one of the best ways to grow your money in the UK also with the lifetime ISA it's been brought to my notice that not every bank in the UK is currently offering this and honestly I'll just say you should stay clear like stay stay away from regular banks when you're trying to look for a lifetime ISA um, I know that so financial companies like investment companies and all of that they are still offering the lifetime ISAs but there are some banks I think like Lloyd's or is it Barclays someone brought up to me that they tried to contact the bank and ask for the lifetime ISA and they said they are not able to offer that at the moment so make sure you look around it must not be with your bank that you have that lifetime time isa is something you're looking into opening now the third way to grow your money in the uk is pensions okay and yes we're going to talk about it yes i know you're not old but you need to start thinking about these things and how you can build wealth for your future self now in the uk there are two types of pension there's government pension and there's workplace pension government pension means you know the regular pension that we see in nigerian films that people are dragging their pension that's what government pension is so in the uk you need to have worked for 35 years not just worked you need to to have contributed national insurance contribution for at least 35 years before you can actually qualify for government pension and what government pension is when you reach the pensionable age which is currently i think 67 then the government will start paying a certain amount um every month or is it every week i think it's 185 pounds i'm going to confirm and put it on the screen but like the government will start paying you pensions now the thing with the government pensions is right now they're looking into reviewing the pensionable age which means by the time that you and i are ready to retire pensionable age might be 75 like this is me just going on a stretch but it's it, it will keep increasing because people are living longer and the government is realizing or more they may not be able to provide for all these people so they will keep extending the pensionable age so my point is you should not depend on state pensions what you should focus on instead is the direction now we are going which is workplace pension so workplace pension in the uk ideally once you start working you're automatically signed up to a pension you can decide to opt out of this pension but once again like i said if you're a student because your stay in the uk is not yet like settled you can decide to opt out of um workplace pension when i was a student i opted out because i was like 
I don't know if I'm gonna be here in two years. So, but if you're living in the UK, please do not opt out of your workplace pension. And here's why: because for whatever amount you contribute, your employer is required to contribute a certain amount as well towards your pensions. And not just that, the government is going to give you 25% tax relief on your pension contributions. Automatically from your salary, you're paying like 4% into your workplace pension. Then usually your employer will pay like 3% into your workplace pension. The government will not give you 25% tax relief. To give you an example of what this looks like in practical. So if, for example, you pay £40 into your workplace pension, your employer is going to pay £30 into that account as well. So you have £70 already. Then the government is going to give you 25% tax relief of the amount that you contributed, which is 40 you're going to get £10. So you pay £40, your employer pays £30, then government will give you £10 on top. So altogether, you already have £80, even though you only contributed £40. I hope this is making sense. You see why you need to maximize your workplace pension because it's not just you that is contributing, you're also getting added payments from your employer and from the government. So make sure to look into your workplace pension. If you don't know if this is existing in your company, make sure to ask, make sure to know where your pension is, look into the account, open it and be sure that the payments are coming in a lot of times we have pension accounts and nobody's looking or checking or seeing what's going on there do you even know the login details for your pension account make sure to find all of that details today okay the third way to grow your money in the uk is to use credit cards that pay you cash back now you know that in the uk there's something called the credit score and one of the ways to build your credit score is to use a credit card it's, it's debatable anyway but it's to use a credit card so with a credit card when you have that try to get one that gives you cash back cash back means when you spend money on something you get a certain percentage of that money that you spent back to you so for example you might um, buy something of 100 pounds and then if the credit card you use says one percent cash back then they'll give you one pound back now it might look like little little money but when this adds up over time and if you're the type that usually like spends a lot of money you might want to make your major expenses from your credit card just so you're building small small pennies here and there before you know you have like 100 pounds and that's like cool money and also there are some you can use to redeem flights and air miles my point is if you're looking into getting a credit card try and get one that gives cash back but one thing i want to say here is that this cash back credit cards usually have an annual fee i know that for one american American Express card like that you pay an annual fee of 25 pounds I mean it's not too bad but just like make sure you read the fine lines and also don't forget that credit cards usually have high interest rates meaning if you don't pay back what you're owing you're going to get hit with a good interest on top of what you are owing so just make sure you really think about it before you go into it but it's an option and I know people that use it and it actually works and they're able to like gather some money back from their expenses the last tip which I just have to throw in here to grow your money in the UK is to have Avoid debt. Avoid boro boro. You know in this UK, every small thing, split the payment into four. Use Klarna. Use this. Use the... Uh-uh. You wish you calm down. Calm down. <laughs> so please avoid all this buy now, pay later. Like Klarna and the rest of them that will tell you split a payment into four. As much as possible, try to pay up front, right? It's only for really massive expenses that I would say, yeah, split it, you know, because it's easier. But like try to avoid just jumping into debt as an option. Because here's the thing. One thing people don't realize with borrowing is when you borrow money you are borrowing from your future self so what this means is if in the future you're supposed to have 100 pounds because you are borrowing 80 pounds to, today you are 80 pounds poorer in the future that's how i need you to understand it when you borrow money you're actually making your future self poorer and that is not the way to go so try to avoid debt as much as possible and try to pay everything up front if you can and as much as it depends on you I hope this video helps. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up because I had to do a lot of work and research to just bring this information to you condensed. So please like this video, share this video and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think and also decide if you would like this type of content more and I'll be looking into creating them. Till next time, thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.